So the company, Banggood, reached out to me and asked me if I would like to do a review on the Tebow Tarantula. And since that means I get to keep it when I'm done, I said yeah. Because I wouldn't consider myself much of a 3D printer expert, I've decided to do this review like a comparison. So I'll be comparing this printer to my ANET 88 the way that it was when I bought it since they're in the same price range. Now, for the first part of this, I'm going to try not to insert my opinion too much, but rather just state facts. So let's get started. The tarantula has a frame that uses aluminum extrusions for all of the structural parts, whereas the ANA A8 uses acrylic. This is beneficial long term because the aluminum is more durable and has considerably less problems with flexing. The ANET A8 comes with a part cooling fan and the necessary ductwork from factory while well, the tarantula doesn't. This is the original fan that came with it. Though it does have a place to plug a part cooling fan in, so you could purchase one and print out the ducting that can be found on Thingiverse and, well, voila. The tarantula comes with an extra extruder head and a place to plug it in on the main board. The ANET A8 does not come with that. Of course you would need to purchase a motor for that extruder and the correct nozzle block to use with that that has the dual nozzle ability. Now if you're a person that's concerned with safety then the TiVo Tarantula is a good pick over the ANA A8. This is because the TiVo Tarantula comes with thermal protection enabled by default and the ANA A8 does not. Thermal protection is a setting that should be enabled by default on any 3D printer that you buy because it is a very important feature that can prevent a fire if your 3D printer's heater cartridge falls out. For more information on that, check out the 3D Printing Professor's video in the description. He'll tell you all about it. So, on to assembly. It took me about 4-5 to five hours to assemble this printer, and I did have one major issue for which they will be docked severely. Okay, I'm just kidding. But I am strongly encouraging TiVo to look into this issue. There are other people that have it, and it may be solvable by just changing a dimension in your STL file before cutting out this acrylic part. But what's really, really interesting about this, if you take this bottom plate off and compare the hole spacing with what they have, the hole spacing on this plate and these plates, you'll notice that the holes on this plate are way too far apart. Way too far apart. That's the entire problem. Now, for any of you that have this issue, you can fix it by just ovaling out the holes with a drill bit, pushing the two non-adjustable wheels closer to the extrusion, and then using your printer to print a replacement part uh, from Thingiverse. I put a link to the file in the description for you. So there you go. Uh, I hate assembling things. I think it's something like if you're good at it, you hate doing it. Like uh, mechanics hate fixing their own cars or electricians don't like fixing their own outlets. Peeling off this backing paper is a really, really good reason to have kids. This is really, really fancy. Thumbs up on this. So for assembly, I just followed the manual. Um, it was really straightforward. All of the bags were labeled with a number and it would say which bag you need for which parts. And in case you're wondering, this is real time. Uh, I didn't speed this up at all. I, I told you I'm, I'm really good at assembling things. I'm like uh, flash. Now, let's talk about print quality. This is a spool holder for the TiVo Tarantula that I printed on the TiVo Tarantula. Uh, I'll link to this as well, it's on Thingiverse, somebody else designed it. This part came out really good down here because it, it was printed in this orientation. You could see that the letters here are, are very, uh, very easy to distinguish and uh, there isn't any layer banding or anything. It's kind of hard to tell on this material, but it is a really good print down on the base here. But once it got up to this arm, you could start to see the issues. This actually should say tarantula. It's hard to read. And the entire reason that this is hard to read and that this arm is a little bit uh, janky looking is because it doesn't have a part cooling fan. 
Now I could have slowed this printer down to make this print nicely and that would have worked. This could be fixed and you could still print this without a part cooling fan, but I would highly suggest that you get one because uh, it is going to be extremely beneficial. And you could just see from the layer lines here that this is all just because it's the lack of part cooling fan. You could see the warpage on the top, same reason. Now including those factors into my decision of is this a better deal than the ANA A8, the answer is maybe. It depends on what you're concerned about. Ultimately, the frame being built out of aluminum extrusions, the Bowden extruder, uh, the fact that thermal protection is turned on by default are extremely important features that put this printer over the top of the ANA A8. All the while, you still have to deal with this wobbly build plate issue from the factory, which I do hope TiVo goes and fixes. So anyways, uh, I'd like to say thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed my review on the TiVo Tarantula. And uh, uh, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And if you'd like to help my 3D printer reviews reach a broader audience, then like this video and share it with your friends. Hey, thanks for watching.